Today we're playing some Panharmonica, but with Urza. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. So a few days ago, we got some early spoilers for Phyrexia All Will Be One, and we found out that the new Elish Nord is literally a Panharmonicon, and that got me thinking about Panharmonicon again. My favorite card, well, one of my favorite cards, alongside Blood Moon, and it's been a minute since we actually played Panharmonicon, and once I started thinking about it, I realized we have gotten some huge new additions in just the last month or two for Blue White Panharmonicon, so today we're heading to Explorer to play some old school Blue White Panharmonicon with a very new school twist. This is Urza Monicon with a bunch of really interesting sweet new cards. So let's talk about our Urza Monicon deck. Jump into some games, see Panor Monicon in action. So we're built around Panor Monicon. In this deck, it's basically just doubling the ETB triggers of our artifacts and creatures. And we got some traditional Panor Monicon stuff, which is creatures ETB draw card, a spirited companion, flibble fip, cloud blazer, the classic from standard Panor Monicon, Thraven Inspector. We got to spend some mana to correct the clue, but technically drawing us a card and these cards all draw us multiple cards if we have panharmonicon on the battlefield but then we get a bunch of really sweet new additions sweet new edition number one reflector mage new to arena thanks to explore anthology too and reflector mage there was this brief glorious minute when panharmonicon was in standard that it was kind of a real deck like it actually top aided a gp and it looked like panharmonicon might be a thing but then sadly reflector mage got banned out of standard and no one played panharmonicon well no one except me played Banner Mod again anymore. But now we have Reflector Mage again, so we can do the old school trick of bouncing our opponent's stuff, maybe two things with Banner and our opponent can't replay it the next turn, so it really slows them down. And this joins Skyclave Apparition, Portable Hole, Touch the Spirit Realms, and a removal package. Then we have one of my favorite new additions to this deck, which is an Eldrazi package. Eldrazi Displacer, really good with ETB triggers because it can just blink something for three mana. So if we need more cards, we blink a uh, Cloud Blazer. If we need more removal, we blink a Reflector Mage. So it's good when played fairly, but it also opens up this weird game ending handlock combo with Thought Nazir. Thought Nazir, ETB is Thought Seizes, but then when it leaves the battlefield, the opponent gets to draw a card. So the idea of this lock is we want a Displacer and a Thought Nazir in the battle field and then we go to our opponent's draw step they draw their card for the turn we can displace the thought not seer our opponent is going to get to draw a card but then we get to thought seize them and hopefully take the only relevant card out of their hand there is a downside to this lock which is since thought not lets our opponent draw that card we can't really keep our opponent from having any cards at all we're just taking the better card out of their hand but panharmonicon turns it into a real hand lock if we have panharmonicon when we blink thought not seer our opponent's going to draw one card but then when thought Thoughtnots here comes into play, we get to thought seize two cards, so we can just lock our opponent out of drawing anything for the rest of the game. Uh, instant speed removal can break out of the lock, but outside of that, it pretty much just keeps our opponent from drawing cards for the rest of the game. Then we have my other favorite part of this deck, which is our Urza Monicon plan. So you're probably wondering, wait, Urza Monicon? Urza doesn't have an ETB. Why are we playing Urza with Panor Monicon? And in all honesty, Urza itself is kind of mid with Panor Monicon. It does ramp us into it, I guess, but really the synergy isn't Urza, it's the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. The Might Stone and the Weak Stone might be the best Panharmonicon card that has been printed in several years. So if you think about Panharmonicon, the challenge of Panharmonicon is you gotta find a window to take off a turn to play this four mana spell that doesn't do anything right away. And what you wanna do is, yeah, you're gonna fall behind during that turn, but hopefully, because of the way your deck is built, you catch back up on turn five on the next turn with doubling up ETB trigger. The Might Stone and the Weak Stone is the perfect card for this play style. When it enters the battlefield, we either draw two cards or give something negative five, negative five. So what this means is we panharmonic on, on turn four. We fall behind a little bit. If we're not too far behind, we can might stone a weak stone and draw four cards, which basically makes it a cloud blazer. It draws the same amount of cards. But if we are super far behind, we panharmonic on, on four, might stone a weak stone, give two things negative five, negative five, kill our opponent's two best creatures, and that's going to buy us the time to do all of our panharmonic on stuff. Plus the might stone a weak stone 
actually has some synergies in our deck. It does ramp for artifacts and abilities, which means it can help activate like Eldrazi Displacer. And then since we have all these artifact ramp stuff going on, we got Portal to Fraxia is our finisher, which is already an absurd card. ETB, each opponent sacks three creatures and you reanimate each turn. It's even more absurd with Panharmonicon because our opponent's going to have to sack six creatures, which should be all their creatures. And then we start reanimating our Cloud Blazers and our ETB stuff. And the value is just over the top. As far as the mana base, Glass Pool Mimic, probably the most exciting one, way to copy all of our ETB stuff. Sideboard, we do have Yarian, we are a Yarian deck. I know I'm not the biggest Yarian fan, but in a deck that actually is full of ETBs, Yarian is just too much value to pass up. So another way to just close out the game, play a bunch of our random ETB dorks, then Yarian, blink everything, get this huge pile of value, a bunch of removal and sweepers for aggro, some graveyard hate, some counters for control, and that is Urza Monicon for Explorer. That's our budget of brew deck for this week, so let's jump into some games and see to these new additions. Eldrazi Displacer, the Might Stone and the Weak Stone, Urza, Portal to Phyrexia, Thought Nazi, a Reflector Mage. How much do they improve Panharmonicon and Explorer? Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some Brothers War cards? And snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish. All right, we are playing some Ursa Monicon. Uh, this new anthology, this Explorer anthology, actually gave us a lot of sweet new pieces for a Panharmonicon deck. New old pieces. Oh, Monogreen Devotion. All right, well... I mean, we got the portable hole, so this is fine. Hole the Elf. <laughs> Bolt the Birds, the 2023 edition. Because <laughs> I'm not nearly as catchy, is it? Opponent. Land and Wolf Willow Haven. Oh, I mean, if we had another hole, we would hole the wolf too, but unfortunately, we're going to have to settle for a three minute inspector. Play Glass Pool Mimic. Go. About it, Corsair of Crufix. Ooh, Cavalier on top, no land, and we do draw the land. Oh, this is huge. Reflector Mage. Bounce the Corsair, and this means we know our opponent's not getting a land next turn either, and we get to be down with the Thrave Beats Vector. About it. Down to 19. <laughs> with the Thrave Beats Elvish Me Stick. Oh, so many Thrave Beats Vectors. New. Well, I mean, I guess we gotta crack the clue to try to hit a land here. Hopefully we do. Ooh, Spirited Companion. Well, in that case, how about a Thraven Inspector? Go. It'd be so much better if we hitting our land drops, though, to get towards these Mightstone and Weak Stones. All right, there's the Corsair. No land out. Oh, another Cavalier on top. Ooh, Panharmonicon. We are a Panharmonicon deck, but in this case, we'd rather have a land. I think we gotta crack the clue, try to hit a land. If we whip on a land here, it's so bad. Okay, Guild of Good, Charming Prince. We are kind of killing ourselves with this chef it dudes. Charming Prince, Blink the Reflector Mage. Bounce the Corsair. Make sure our opponent's still stuck on four mana. Which is not enough for these two uh, Cavaliers that we know about. Well, now we're to the point where if we draw one more land, we're to a Panharmonicon into Might Stone and Weak Stone, which is kind of absurd. I think that's my favorite. That's the reason to play Urzamonicon, is how well Might Stone and Weak Stone interacts with Panharmonicon. It's really sweet. It's like, oh, it gives you the catch up mechanism of. Ooh, all right, there's the land. I mean, this is fine. Pony Karns gets a land, but we just need to kill the Karns, so it's not too devastating. So play Panharmonicon. Play the Raven Inspector. Uh, but the Mice and Weak Stone, it's like a Cloud Blazer, but it can also be a, a Ravenous Chupacabra. It's like a Ravenous Chupacabra Cloud Blazer hybrid card in Panharmonicon, which is exactly what you want the turn after Panharmonicon. Either kill two things or draw four cards or a combination. Well, kill the Karn, hit our opponent. Well, we know our opponent's gotten the mana to play their big things now. The bad news for our opponent is, I mean, we got two, two Mice Stone and Weak Stones in hand, which is pretty bonkers here. So next turn we can, ooh, Nisa. That's, that's fine. Turns on the land. Oh no. Oh no, our opponent is going to get absolutely wrecked here. Oh my God. Well, we're gonna see the Might Stone and Weak Stone power in Panharmonicon. I think we just Might Stone and Weak Stone kill the land and the elf. Stone, stone the land, stone the, stone the, stone the Elvish Mystic. It's kind of a double stone rain actually in this case. Even better because the land taps for two, but kill both. And then we just get to attack the Nissa down and our opponents, wow, they've had so many mana problems. Well, they're back to being nowhere near casting Cavaliers. Uh, kill the Nissa. Oh, hmm. Well, I guess we could have got in for one at our opponent, but yeah, yeah. 
We're about panharmonicon value, not winning. Crack the clue. Might Stone and Weak Stone has some synergies too. Like next turn we can use Might Stone and Weak Stone to put Yarion in hand because Yarion's an ability and then we can, oh. All right, opponent does hit the land, but I don't think this matters. And an elf. I mean, Yarion here is just game, right? <laughs> We have the mana, so we get the Yarion. We play the, I mean, we get six clues, a bunch of life's or scries, bounce your board, draw, I mean, this is just ridiculous. Yes, uh, we will blink many things, and about it, cannot overcome the Panormana God value. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been a lot of value. <laughs> All right, what do we want against Mono Green Devo? Oh, that was so good. Panormana God. I mean, we didn't see Urza himself, but we did get to see the Mice on the Weak Stone go off. So I think we just bring in more portable holes, maybe a farewell. Cataclysmic seems fine. I mean, we can't actually stop Nykthos, so our best bet is just keep green permanents off the battlefield and kind of tempo them out. We're gonna have Flibs, I guess. Maybe like a Cloud Blazer. Maybe we just cut like one of everything. Good enough. We'll just cut one of literally everything. All right, well, game one went really well. I'm super scared of Mono Green Devotion though. Like it is a very powerful Magic the Gathering deck. One land, no keep. Oh boy. All right, Thraben Inspector Tribal again. Somehow our 80 card deck is really good at drawing every Thraben Inspector. A bonnet, elf. Well, you know the drill. <laughs> gotta, gotta hold the elf. <laughs> Send it in the portable. Not quite as sweet as a door to nothing is, but not, not bad, not bad. A bonnet, forest, and even more elves. Well, play the land, draw a card with the good boy. Well, let's see what they have here. This is kind of a big turn. Abonant, old girl troll. I mean, that is a creature that touch the spirit realms can deal with. Play the planes, touch the troll. My God, these three boomble spell with creature name. I think we gotta gotta chill with the removal spell name plus creature name. It never sounds right. It never sounds right. <laughs> Nisa. Okay, there's a Nisa. Abonant. <laughs> Turns on the forest. It's us. Well, I mean, we get the pod nods here to see if our opponent has something something good going on. Well, all right, Old Girl Pro's fine. We'll get rid of that. And pass the turn. Well, I mean, now it's really a question of what our opponent top decks. There are top decks that they would have that would be devastating here. As it is, though, the the Thought Knot can kind of hold off these forests for now. I wonder just, oh, Displacer is, that's a big one. That is a big one. So one of the cool synergies of this deck is Displacer with Thought Knot Seer can form sort of a soft lock on our opponent's draws if we blink Thought Knot during our opponent's draw step. So after this turn, we should be able to make sure that our opponent doesn't draw anything super good. Ooh, no, oh, Nick throws off the, okay. So opponent, I mean, they have all the mana. They have literally all the mana. Is this card relevant? And this Courser actually might help us here because now we know what our opponent's drawing. So we know, okay, they're gonna draw a Courser next turn. We don't really care about a Courser, so we don't need to blink Thought Knot during our opponent's draw step. But if they ever have something, my Stony Weak Stone, if they ever have something good on the top of their deck, then I think we we start blinking the Thought Knot. It's tempting to kill a forest, but our opponent has so much mana Anna. Maybe we just draw? I really, this is like super close. If our opponent, yeah, let's just draw. If our opponent didn't already have all the mana in the world, then I think it would be worth worth killing one of the lands. But with Nykthos and Nyssa, like our opponent's got, they got the lands. All right, and we still have a blink available thanks to Might Stone and Weak Stone mana. About it, ooh, okay. Gonna cash in the Nissa to make their lands indestructible. Although indestructible is not unblinkable. So hilariously, this displacer can still just deal with these lands. Wow, okay, so opponent has all the mana. Ooh, Cavalier on top. Do we need to stop our opponent from Cavaliering? I mean, they already got the Nick though, so. I mean, the main things we're worried about are Planeswalkers, especially Karn. Like, we can't let our opponent get a Karn. That would that would beat us. Uh, Storm the Fest, oh, well, okay. Well, that makes the ultimating of Nissa make more sense. Nissa mm, number two. Oh, that's a lot of indestructible three threes. Save us, Eldrazi Displacer. You're our only hope about it. I mean, we're kind of okay though. We get to block one with Thought Knot and then blink one to turn it back into a normal forest. Still indestructible, but uh, also triggers the Courser. All right, well, we take three. Farewell would be pretty devastating. Opponent runs out the Courser. 
we draw even more lands. I mean, this displacer is going to keep us alive. It just undoes the Nissa. And I guess all the mana in the world doesn't do anything unless you have something to cast with it. Let's. Yeah, let's make Yarion. Does Cavalier matter? It is big, but they already got the Nick, though. So it's not. Hmm. You know what? Maybe it's fine. Whatever. I mean, we can also, it doesn't have Trample or anything. So they play it. They already got the Nick though, so that doesn't really, they already have so much mana, it just like doesn't really matter. And we can also just like chump and blink our own stuff, which is probably better. All right, opponent, more Nick Thigh. Opponent has a lot of life here. If we ever could find a Panharmonicon, oh, then things become really sweet, opponent. Turns on a land, still indestructible, goes to combat. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, blink a land. Displacer is like legit good. Why does no one ever play Displacer? Look at all the, like, <laughs> opponent's going off, but like, <laughs> Displacer is just single handedly keeping these Nisses in check. Oh, Storm of the Festival on top means we do have to blink Thought Not next turn. We cannot let our opponent have that. Well, block, drop to 11. Oh my God, it's Panharmonicon. Hmm. So we can play Panharmonicon and we can still double blink if we play the land untapped. Yeah, let's do that. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Storm the festival. And this is even better. <laughs> oh, look how good this is. So I think we've just locked our opponent out of drawing cards for the rest of the game. So we blink thought not seer. If we stack the triggers properly, we let our opponent draw first. So now our opponent's gonna draw the Kiora, but then we get two Thought Knot triggers to exile the two cards in our opponent's hand. So if our opponent, <laughs> these coursers are kind of wrecking our opponent because we know what they're drawing. If our opponent ever has something good on the top of their deck, we just make them not draw it. So I think we're good here. We're gonna have to do some chumping, but then we get to untap in Yarion and just, oh. All right, opponent, big attack. We do need to not die. So we're taking eight. I think that's fine. And then we just blink the spirited companion to draw a couple cards. One more removal spell would be nice. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Mm. All right, how about, uh? oh my goodness. If we portal, our opponent would get back Karn. Portal's so tempting, cause it's just like so big and splashy. I don't know if it's right though. I think Portal might be for next turn. Let's Yarion. Opponent gets back some stuff temporarily. Hmm. Yeah, we kind of messed this up. <laughs> All right, like I was thinking we could like play the another Might Stone Weak Stone and then blink, but that actually doesn't. Uh, because we're at one that doesn't work. Mm. Yeah, we should have played. I mean, this doesn't really matter. We should have played the Reflector Mage first, but I still think we just ruin our opponent's day here. So in the grand scheme, all these triggers are going to not not make this relevant. So, OK, everything comes back. My Stone and Weak Stone. Kill an indestructible land. Kill a Corsair land. I mean, we're dealing with basically everything here. Kill a land. Portable hole. Elf. Touch the spirit realm. Get rid of a land. Might stone and weak stone. Get rid of a land. Hole another elf. So opponent has two coursers. Yeah, I guess if we had played the reflector mage first, we would have bounced the coursers too. Although we kind of like the coursers. We kind of like the coursers being around, so it means, ooh, thought not. And it opens veto. Kind of like them being around, so we know the top of our opponent's deck. I mean, this one I think is kind of over. Better money gone! Taking down maybe the best deck in the format. I mean, it's going to take us a minute to kill our opponent, but I mean, we got Portal of Phyrexia coming next and another Mystone and Weak Zone and our opponent scoops it up and that was spectacular. Ooh, Panharmonicon might actually be good now. Sweet, sweet. We are playing some Urzamonicon. Explore. Ooh, we got our Panharmonicon. All right, this hand's actually not bad. Thrabes, removal Panharmonicon. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Who is it? Yes, it is. Well, okay. Uh, Thraben Inspector, go. It's a little scary. That might mean Panharmonicon getting uh, countered here. Opponent. Shivan Reef Ledger Shredder. Muta Vault. Pass the turn. So maybe a Phoenix deck, I would guess. Opponent, gonna draw some cards. Gonna discard a card. Definitely a Phoenix deck. This should be interesting, opponent. Land. And Fiery Impulse to connive. I mean, the good news is we do have an answer to the Ledger Shredder. 
Oh, the bad news is our opponent has two Arclight Phoenixes at the top of their deck. Well, Skyclave. Kill the Ledger Shredder. Can we survive two Arclight Phoenixes somehow, though? Oh, no. Are they coming back this turn? Oh, no. Oh, no. If they come back this turn, we're going to be in a bad spot. Punter draws a card. That's just too fast. Land. Strangle. Gets a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, if they got a spell, we're dead. Double arc light on the top. All right, opponent. Show us that spell. Show us that spell. Literally any spell. Doesn't even matter. Oh, psh, three arc. Yeah, okay. Three arc light phoenixes on the top of the deck. Good clean fair magic. Farewells in. Touch the spirit realms in. And rest in pieces in. We will go down in Urza. A flibblethip. A thought not seer. A Reflector Mage, a Reflector Mage. We're on the play. Urzamonicon versus all the Is It Phoenixes. Well, I mean, we're not going to keep the one lander. This will keep. I mean, hmm. Urza to the bottom. You know what? We're just going to put Glass Pool to the bottom. That's fine. We'll keep the Urza. So the good news about this hand is Rest in Peace is really good against our opponent's deck. Really, really good. That should buy us a lot of time. I mean, we're just going to, we're just going to slam it. All right, opponent, how is your game plan when you don't get to Phoenix? Opponent, hold the Storm Giants and Ledger Shredder. You know what? Let's just play Displacer. Displacer, go. No Panharmonic on this hand. Oh, dear, Double Shredder. Oh, God. Okay, well, this is problematic for another reason. Opponent discards a Mountain. Okay, discards a Opt. To the bottom, draws a card, gets in for two. Well, that's not exactly a land. Spirited Companion, draw a card. Add a car ways. Go. Oh, we did such a good job of hating out the arc lights, but these ledger shredders. Opponent considers connives. I mean, I guess at some point we're just going to have to pass and blink ledger shredders to try to reset the counters if we don't draw removal yeah ledger shredder is a good card opponent discards another cantrip gets to consider to the graveyard draws a card gets and hits us for five Ugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. down to 13 passes more displacers i'll go to combat hit ya takes the beats to 13. Chef at Dooms go. It's it is time to start blinking ledger shredders, I think, unfortunately. Opponent land attacks. Well, I mean blank a ledger shredder. Displacer is a pretty good card. So we only take two. We shrink the ledger shredder. Down to eleven. Still wouldn't mind finding removal. Still would not be bad. Opponent charred a course. Charred a course to draw even more cards. And could not pony just see so much of their tech. We've seen 11 cards, our opponent's seen 26. Discards are ending volley. Refuel. All right, so opponent is almost drawn half their deck. Opponent passes. More rests in peace. Not the, not the most helpful. I don't go attacking. All right, Lightning Axe discards a land. Okay, takes one. Well, replay the Displacer past the turn. This is another Lightning Axe. I mean, opponents drawn so many cards, I guess they can just afford to discard essentially their hand. And there's an Arc Light. Well, I mean, we need to top deck something this turn or we're dead. Opponent discards an Abrade. <laughs> yeah, two ledger shredders and no removals tough. Found it hits us. Miracle draw. A Tuara, not good enough. Well, play Urza. I mean, actually, no, this is this is horrible. Urza bounce, we're still. Is there any way we get back in this? Yeah, I mean we're just we're just dead. Well, alright. No panharmonic on that game. We are playing some Urza Monicon in Explore this week, and uh sounds fine. See what our opponent's up to. Other than doing a little mulliganing. Hello, opponent. Schwamp, eh? Uh, 
like, yeah, we're gonna hold on to the glass pool for now. We got enough lands that if they thought sees it, that's kind of fine. Another swamp for our opponent and a misery shadow. Um, Shuffit Dunes and Spirited Companion Draw Guard. Portable Hole's not bad. That can get rid of the Misery Shadow, although at some point we would like to draw less painful lands. Ponet gonna kill the Spirited Companion, go to Gomet, get in, hit us, and gifted Aetherborn. Ooh! So opponent's playing Mono White, or Mono Black Devotion by the looks. Well, let's Portable Hole, ouch. Get rid of the shadow. Play the land. Charming Prince. Also, ouch. Do some scrying. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep the land. <laughs> really need to stop taking so much damage from our lands. Abonet gets and hits us down to 13. Field of Ruin. You know what? That's actually kind of fine. That's actually super fine. We'll get the planes. Pono was trying to ruin our scry, and they did ruin our scry, but we were mostly doing that just to, uh, ooh, Flibblefip. All right, Flibblefip. Ouch, draw a card. Glass pool Mimic, Thraben Inspector. Pass the turn. Gonna need some removal at some point. Uh, Pony Hive of the Eye Tyrant goes attacking. Uh, yeah, let's try to kill this Gifted Aethermorn. Pony gonna do some pumping. We are gonna take a lot of damage here. Down to eight. And a Gifted Aethermorn. Well, hopefully we get to start doing fun things. Cloud Blazer. Up to 10 draw a couple guards. Okay, we hit a removal spell, which is nice. Goes attacking. Well, we'll just block the shadow. This turn should be pretty good because we can glass pool mimic cloud blazer. Draw some cards, gain some life. Where's our panharmonicon? We need a panharmonicon. Play a muta vault. Touch the spirit realm. Get rid of the misery shadow. Pass the turn. If they attack with hive of the eye tyrant, we're probably gonna double block. Uh, bonus. Thoughtsies. I don't know what they take here. Wow, the Urza. Interesting. A uh, bonus. Combat. Well, I mean, block and block. They should kill the real one so we can't blink it. See if our opponent realizes. All right, they do kill the real one. Well, spirited companion draw a card. Play the land. Might stone and weak stone. Draw two cards. Hit you with the Cloud Blazer. I mean, we are fully in the fine panharmonicon mode or portal. Portal to Frexy would be busted. Oh, do it. That's actually bad. Invoke Despair. Well, Sack Sack. Drop to four. Crack the glue. More Thought Not Seers. Pony gets and hits us. Well, let's Thought Not Seer. Oh my god, it's an Invoke Despair. Okay, good thing we did that. Skyclave Apparition, down to three. Get rid of the Gifted Aetherborn. Land Yarion, go. Shieldred. Yeah, so we dropped to one. Yeah, it's not much life. Play the land. Play the Skyclave. Get rid of the shield. Hit ya, hit ya. We literally cannot play anything, right? I mean, I guess we can play a Thought Knot. Yeah, run it out. <laughs> this painful mana base is uh, actually a problem. Opponent untaps. Please, nothing that kills us. Passes. Go to combat. Do some attacking. If they draw, remove for the Skyclave. All right, so they're gonna kill the Skyclave to get a 4-4, four, four, to block a Thought Knot. This is mostly okay, though, I think. So opponent blocks the thought now they get to draw a card. They drop to 14. We get to, we play Eldrazi Displacer. Then we play Glass Pool Mimic to copy Thought Not Seer. Take the Thought Seize. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Once our opponent draws, blink the Thought Not Seer. Opponent gets to draw first. Take the Meat Hook Massacre, thankfully. Opponent, land. 
I mean, this should do it, I think, right? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Blink the Murderous Rider. Fire up the Mutaval. And we got there. Okay. No Panharmonicon. No Panharmonicon. But we were able to overcome a pretty decent amount of black draw. All right. What are we sideboarding in? Bring in a farewell. Go down one Urza. Well, touch the spirit realm. Let's go down one portal. Portal's kind of slow. Let's run out like that. Mono black versus Urza Monocon. We won without a Panharmonicon. Although mono black is like one of the best Panharmonicon matchups if we can get it down because they can't kill it. That sounds good. No Panharmonicon, but I mean, we got a good curve. We got some redraws. About it. And our mana base not gonna be as painful this game. Reflector Mage is a big deal for this deck. Gifted Ethabo and for our opponent. We're gonna play this on white almost for sure. So let's just play that on white. Run out the Spirit of Command and draw a card. Might Zone Weak Zone also a huge deal for this archetype. Opponent. Tap land. Shadow. Attacks. No blocks. Hmm. Well, play the land. Reflector Mage. Bounce the shadow. Yeah, we're not blocking this turn, so hey, if for one, pass the turn. We want to hold on to Skyclave for a Shieldred. Shieldred's something we gotta kill permanently. Opponent, Liliana. You know what, let's discard. Yeah, let's discard Spirited Companion. Opponent, wow, getting in. All right, uh, we will take it. Down to 16. All right, glass pool tapped. Skyclave. Get rid of the gifted Etherborn. Hit the lily. Pass the turn. I mean, we have a lot of card draw in hand, which is sweet. Opponent, Meatball Massacre. Yup. I assume they're, wow, they're gonna tick up. All right, yeah, we'll discard the Skyclave. Opponent pitches the Misery Shadow out, land and Cloud Blazer. Draw a couple cards. Ooh, Panharmonicon. That's Panharmonicon. That's a Panharmonicon. About it. <clears throat> what do you got? Oh, God, Shieldred. Well, we'll discard the gl. Yeah, let's discard Glass Pool, sadly. Pona hits us. Well, we draw. We get drained. But, Might Stone and Weak Stone. Kill Shieldred. Hit the Lily. You know. Play the land, grab Yarion. Ooh, go for the throw. All right, well, that's good for our opponent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, Panharmonicon down, unfortunately. Feels so bad, but I think we had to do it. About it, passes. Well, Yarion. Blink Might Stone and Weak Stone. All the Storm Giants. Get back, Might Stone and Weak Stone. Let's see. So he hit us for five, down to six. And then we portal. Yeah, I think we, we got to draw to save our portal in case they take up. All right, draw a couple cards. Well, we will see about it. Yield of Ewan. Sure. We'll grab a planes. Oh, this is going to be close. This is going to be close. I put it on taps. Oh, my goodness. Okay. That might make it less close. Gets and hits us to five. Well, we'll discard. Yeah, that's... That's not good. That's not good. Portal to Phyraxia. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this is it. What did our opponent top deck? Oh, and they can take down Liliana on themselves. Let's see if they see the line. Wow. They do not see the line. We'll discard Might Stone and Weak Stone. We will reanimate. If we kill this, we die. Oh no. I mean, I guess we take Shieldred and see what happens. We whiff. Okay. We go up to three. We pass the turn. Opponent draws. Gets drained. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. I mean, we can Ejano that. Opponent's going to take down to kill the Shieldred. Sure. Goes to combat with Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Attacks. Reflector Mage. So. A Jano. Kill the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Drop to two. Ipnu Rivulet. 
Sack of chef it tunes. Mill some cards. Oh, so she older puts us up to four. Displacer, what's slowing on it? F two still? Well, I mean, I guess it's just she older again. Take she older, gain some life. Displacer is not the worst. Displacer. And the land. Pass the turn. So we can uh, use Displacer to get rid of. So I think we just sack Shieldred. Yeah, sack Shieldred. Get drained. Opponent plays the land. Displacer stops the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Wow, this has been ridiculously close. We are fighting and clawing at the lowest possible life total. Where's our Panharmonicon? One, two. Sack the Rivulet. Mill ourselves. Trying to find like a Cloud Blazer. Ooh, Urza. Urza's interesting. Uh, I think we gotta go for it. I mean, we are Urza Monicon. Urza. Let's see if they got a removal spell. Let's see if they got a removal spell. We draw Glass Pool Mimic. We gotta go for it. Flip it. Wow! Wow! Opponent's top deck was the perfect card. Okay. Glass Pool Mimic. Wow. Hit you. Oh no. What a draw for our opponent. Opponent gets in. Eats the Urza. Oh. All right. Down to one again. Opponent plays a land. Passes. I guess we're back to getting back Shieldreds to gain life. Go attacking. Hit ya. Play the land past the turn opponent and taps. Can they top deck again? Gets drained. Hive of the eye tyrant. That doesn't beat a displacer though. Blanket. Opponent floats a mana, sure. Passes, okay. We'll go to our graveyard. Spirited companion to draw a card. Gain a little bit more life. Gain a little more life. Play the land. Blink Spirited Companion. Gain some life. Might Stone and Weak Stone number two. Keep the new one. Draw some cards. Gain some life. Okay. We have, we have gotten out of the danger zone and our opponent scoops it up. So we didn't get to see, we didn't get to see Panharmonicon go off, but that was a sweet game of magic. We were down to one, one life, and we managed to get back into it with Portal of Phyrexia and uh, <laughs> our opponent's Yaldred and Eldrazi Displacer, which is also new to Arena. That was, uh, that was a good win. Outside of not fighting the Panharmonicon, that was, I can't believe we survived that. We were right on the edge of being dead for so many turns. But uh, yeah, sweet, 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 sweet. We are Urza Monoconing in Explore. Who would have thought? Urza and Panharmonicon together at last. Ooh, I like this hand. I mean, we got we got our one flibble flip, so of course we're good. Opponent. Land where else? Well, uh, tap land, go. Jingatha A. Ooh, what is our opponent? Oh, this might be, is this a Coco deck? I'm guessing a Co, ooh, oh no, Kinnon. Oh, this might be bad. Uh, Yeah, are we, I guess, so this has gotta be a Sarah combo. We're not dead yet, but we might not be that far away from being dead. They have the Kinnon. They need one more cost reducer and then a Sarah and they go infinite. I assume that's what they're doing. Okay, there's Gwenna. So our opponent is a turn away from winning and we, we cannot currently stop this, can we? Oh, I wish we had more white mana. Oh, this is bad. Okay. Yeah, I guess we, oh, this is super bad. Pass the turn. Opponent discards a Llanowar. Gets a Sararak. So we need to discard a Tuara. Bounce Gwenna. Oh, we're still in a really bad spot. We have to draw an untapped white source this turn. If we draw an untapped white source, we might be okay. There's a Gwenna. Gets and hits us, no blocks. Well, this is it. We know they go infinite and we do not draw it. Okay, well, good news is we know what our opponent's doing. Bad news is 
We're not especially built to stop what our opponent's doing. I guess the portable hold us something. So we're bringing a little bit more removal. The challenge for us is, while we have a lot of removal, it's pretty much all sorcery speed. So I guess we have to just dodge the Cocos and kill the Gwenas. But we're on the play, which should help. And we know what our opponent's doing. And we'll keep this. We know what our opponent's doing, so we know we have to stop. Like we've played, we've played this deck, so we know exactly what we have to, what we have to shut down. Whether or not we can do it, that remains to be seen. Green screen's looking a little sketchy here. Oh, more sketchy, less sketchy. There we go. Do we fix it? Pretty good. Uh, Chef it dudes. Spirited companion. Wolf wolf. Draw a card. Well, I mean, hopefully double Skyclave is pretty helpful here. Abonent, add a Garways. Cannon, and Elvish Mystic. Well, play the land, Skyclave the Cannon. Hit you for one. Abonent untaps. Coco is probably the scariest card still. Getting getting combo pieces at instant speed is pretty good against us. About it. Even more cannons and a Relic of Legends. And gets Jingatha. All right, well, play the land on white. Skyclave. To get rid of Relic of Legends. Portable hole. To get the cannon, hit ya. All right, so far we're keeping the combo pieces off the battlefield. The opponent is pretty far away from actually comboing off here. About it. Jingatha. Oh, play the land. Might stone and weak stone. And opponent, done, 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 done. We didn't get to do anything fun, but we did kill enough stuff that we didn't get comboed off. So that's that's a win. Oh, come on, portable hole. We gotta be able to hold the elf. We, we gotta be able to deal with the turn one elf. That would be ideal. It's a lot of Thraben inspectors. I mean, this is a hand that's fine. Can we keep it though? We have zero removal. I think we actually mulligan it. Oh no. Oh boy, okay. Well, um, all right, bottom and bottom. Yeah, this is not good. Now I kinda wish we kept the sketchy first hand. <laughs> Although, like, I guess we do have two removal spells now. We'll see if we find the lands to get to them. Now we'll see if we're alive. There's a portable hole. Well, yeah, I mean, we're gonna have to get lucky. Portable hole, hit the mystic. No attacks. If we draw an untap land, we can snipe the Gwenna. Oh boy, are they just going infinite? I mean, fair enough. So, I mean, we've played this combo before in non-explorer formats. Basically, and Kinnon's not bugged here, by the way. Basically, this this is infinite venturing through dungeons, and eventually infinite venturing will drain us out of the game. I think, in theory, we could sit here and be like, hey, you're gonna time out. But I value my time too much for that and value winning too little. So GG, GG cannon. I mean, that is as fast as this deck can win. Turn one elf, turn two Gwenna, turn three cannon to Sarak. Cannot get faster. Uh, not as cool as us doing sweet panharmonicon things, but I mean, yeah, we got to see something that, uh, I mean, you might never see again, at least that efficiently. So sweet, sweet, I guess. Cool. We are, uh, <laughs> Punching up this round, 305. Who opponent is uh, near the top of the rankings? That is pretty high mythic. Uh, we're playing Zamanicon. This hand seems uh, pretty good. Not the fastest hand, but once we get up to, well, three or four or five mana, things become good. Blood Crypt, so Rakdos probably? No, nope. add a car ways. Yeah. Uh, Ponerino, what are you up to, Rakdos? Schwamp. Passes, okay. Well, our opponent not being off to a fast start's good for us. Our hand actually has a lot of mid-rangey power. Uh, stomps our face, sure, sure, sure. And, Graveyard Trespasser, hmm. We can bounce it, but then we'd have to discard because of war. That war discard one isn't annoying. Yeah, boy, yeah, all right, we're gonna do it. This hurts, but Reflector Mage. 
Bounce your graveyard trespasser, discard a might stone, a weak stone. See what happens. This does make sure our opponent has something good in hand for our thought knot at least. Although that probably is not gonna be a problem. Oh, there's the fable. Okay, that's awkward. Well, yeah, play the land and do some thought knotting. What do you got, opponent? Whoa, that is a handful of action. She old read Liliana Trespasser and go for the throw. Wow, I think we take the go for the throw. That might not be the most powerful card, but Liliana, not that great because we insect the Reflector Mage. Shieldred dies to Might Stone. Ooh, they just discard the Graveyard Trespass. All right, this is gonna be a battle. Opponent gets in with the Gobbo. So what's the blowout? We block and then they stomp Liliana Tick Down. Eh. I mean, we can't let this just snowball into infinite, infinite mana. All right, opponent sacks the clue. Fatal pushes the Thought Knot Seer, sure. And then the Liliana, presumably to kill the Thought Knot Seer. Well, that was not the, not the greatest turn we've ever had. I'll, I will admit, found it high with the eye tire. Ooh, smoke him if you got him. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do a little bit of cloud blazing. <laughs> Draw two, gain two. Ooh, boy, if we can find a Panharmonicon, this sounds so sweet. About it, flips, reflection. Good to get down the Cloud Blazer before the shield rid. Gets a lot worse, although we do have the Skyclave now and the Mice a Weeks down, but Bonet gets in. Hits us. Hopefully we can, we can uh, blaze this Liliana here. Oh, more Fables. Sure. Can we outvalue two Fable the Mirror Breakers? All right, there's a Bone Crusher. No uptick of Liliana. I mean, we have enough, oh, this is interesting. We could displace her blink, but I think, I'm worried about this reflection. Oh, we could displace her blink a token. <laughs> Displacer is the, the token assassin. That's one of the upsides of Eldrazi Displacer. It is very good at getting rid of tokens. This is tough. Pony has a lot of power and we're not at that high of a life total. Reflection copying Bone Crusher is pretty bad. I mean, I think we have to get rid of Liliana. That's for sure. So Liliana down. Yeah, I think we just gotta do it. Skyclave, snag the reflection, play the land, and run out a good boy. Yeah, let's play the Displacer, it uses our mana better. And it also does block, like one only has two cards in hand. They do get to filter, but if they don't have removal and we untap with this Displacer, it's gonna be really good. Really, really good. We can blink the Skyclaves to get rid of Shieldred, we can blink the Blazer to draw cards, gain life, big attack. Treasures for days. Well, I mean, we will block. Take six. Down to seven. Blood Tithe Harvester. I mean, they gotta play Shieldred, right? Shieldred's so good when your opponent's low in life. And against the deck, they can blink Cloud Blazer. All right, there's a Shieldred. So we're dropping to five. Thought Not Seer. I mean, if we can stabilize, that'll be good. Well, we gotta kill Shieldred. So let's Might Stone and Weak Stone. Get rid of shield red. This also gives us the mana to uh, blink with displacer, which is nice. Pass the turn. So I guess our hope is probably, I mean, I guess best case is blocking with cloud blazer and then blinking it. All right, opponent discards land of the blood. Using this blood tithe as removal probably would have been decent. I guess we could just blink whatever they target, but that does use our blink. All right, opponent, another creature land goes to combat. We're barely holding on, okay, so. Block you, block you, block you. Hopefully blink the Cloud Blazer. I mean, if they kill it now, it's gonna die anyway, so at least it got the block. The real problem's the Displacer. Like, that's the card. <laughs> that's the card that if they let this stick around, it is It is going to outvalue them eventually, especially with this extra mana from my Stone and Weak Stone. All right, kills the Displacer. Whew, all right. Draw two, gain two. So we technically take zero. Oh, there's a banner monicon. <laughs> there's a banner. Is it gonna be in time? Oh my goodness, this is close. So we're at seven. Pony gets a three through. They got a big board. Is Jano a? Eh? Well, I mean, let's generate some value. Panharmonicon. Do we die if we Panharmonicon? Probably. I mean, Panharmonicon thought not. So I think, okay, I think our best bet. Panharmonicon, 
into spirited companion draw two hopefully into like a reflector mage or something some way to answer the board how good is panharmonicon is it good enough in 2023 ish so spirited companion draw two come on removal if we don't have removal i think we die because of the creature lands and this reflection okay glass Ooh, wow those are hits i'll play a jano sky clave down to six that is huge so we get to get rid of the bone crusher and we get to get rid of the reflection and now we have a three mana cloud blazer for next turn too oh oh the tide might be turning the tide might be turning unless our opponent can make us die we are going to get to see panharmonicon do panharmonicon things ox of a is to refuel that means no creature land attack which means we do get to untap opponent gonna get frisky no nope. block take two down to four we technically survive a shield right right we can copy the skyclave with glass pool instead we'd rather cloud blaze but we'll see misery shadow sure oh oh you know my stone weeks down okay so <clears throat> <laughs> good things are about to happen uh step one good boy step two copying a cloud blazer does sound sweet so we can might stone and weak stone <sighs> all right this is this is fine uh glass pool mimic blaze it twice <laughs> yes draw four gate four perhaps the most classic panharmonicon line panharmonicon cloud blazer oh another one. Oh, and two panharmonicons uh okay uh we'll play a land my stone and weak stone number two keep the new one kill your shadow kill your token no attacks. I mean, next turn things get kind of ridiculous. I mean, we will win the long game against most decks. Once you start stacking up Panharmonicons, it becomes hard to lose. I wonder what people at the top of Mythic think about getting Panharmonicon. But it's like competing to be like top Mythic overall and <laughs> they just get Panharmonicon. Gonna go to combat, gonna fire up the den of the bugbear, goes attacking. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, we want to trade in the clone version of Cloud Blazer. Block, block, chump. Take two down to six. There's the shield red. All right, so we're going to four. Actually, we can just Ottawa it. Send it to the the Great White North. Um, yeah, let's let's just mount shielded for now. Bounce it and then thought not it. Ooh, and a Charming Prince. Oh, Charming Prince too. So, Charming Prince. Blink the Cloud Blazer. Gain three. Thought Not Seer. Take your Shieldred. And, eh, all right, just a den of the bugbear. We'll take your Shieldred. Oh, is this, I mean, I think we're pulling away now. Pass the turn. Cloud Blazer comes back. Draw four, gain four again. Ooh, and a flibble fib. Okay. Well, discard a land. A boner untaps. Well, we're back up to 13. We were almost dead there, but now we're back up to 13. And at some point, we can just Yari on. Opponent attacks, attacks. I don't know if we want to kill the Oxivagonus. Let's just block the, the land. I mean, at this point, with another Panharmonicon coming down, hard to see how this goes wrong. Well, that's portable hole. Get rid of the token. Get rid of a treasure, because why not? Flibblefip draws some cards. Hmm. All right, Panharmonicon. I guess maybe we should have Panharmonicon first. We was trying to see if we drew into anything, but... Charming Prince, X3, gain some life, gain some life, blink some Cloud Blazers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, life is good. Life is good in Panharmonicon land. Untap land. Thraven Inspector. Clues X3. And, uh, yeah. Hit ya. I think it's time to go aggro. 
put it down to 12. And yeah, I, I don't know if our opponent's getting back into this. Draw six, gain six with the Cloud Blazer this time. <laughs> This Cloud Blazer has drawn us an ungodly number, 20 cards or something and gained 20 life. I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for the life gain, we would be super dead by now. We were all, we, like, we were an attack away from being dead at one point, but <laughs> Panharmonicon, Blinking Cloud Blazer, Charming Prince, out of the danger zone, about it. I'm surprised our opponent hasn't given up yet. Like, I'm surprised they haven't just given up. Like, how do they get back in this game? Rakdos is like all one for ones. I guess they could have a Meat Hook Massacre. Even then, like, we got seven cards and two Panharmonicons. Seems like they have removal and they don't know what to kill. Honestly, I don't think it matters. Oh, Shatter's, okay. That's actually pretty good for our opponent. All right, so they kill the Skyclave. They get a massive token. I mean, we do have our Urza now, though. We can finally just Urza Monicon. Urza, flip it, <laughs> meld it, and you know, let's uh, get rid of your Ox of Agotis. And also make some soldiers and play a land. Le yeah, let's just Reflector Mage. Bounce the token <laughs> three times for good measure. <laughs> I mean, the deck does sometimes meld Urza. It does happen every once in a while. Found it, down to four, and I mean, this one's, it looks over, opponent passes. We will respectfully just attack with everything, and, oh, Panamonic taking out Rakdos. <laughs> <laughs> Best deck in the format, eh? Maybe before Panharmonicon came along. Oh, I do love winning with Panharmonicon. I do enjoy it. Yeah, we'll uh, bring in a bit more removal. Yeah, I guess we just do some very light sideboarding. Run it like that. All right, on to game number two. And, you know, I mean, we do need to draw lands, although the Charming Prince Scry should help us get there. All right, Keselog Wayne, sure. Well, yeah, Shavadoon's go. Not 100% sure what color we gotta put this pathway on. Blood Tithe, Havista. Well, yeah, let's just keep waiting. Charming Prince, Scry. Oh, yeah, Thought Knot's probably worth keeping. Cloud Blazer, I don't know if we need because it might stone in weak stone. Like, that is basically Cloud Blazer. Are we killing the Charming Prince? At this point, we don't especially care. Sand is a lot of removal. All right, go for the throw. Takes down the Charming Prince. Well, now we might just get rid of the Blood Tithe Harvester. <laughs> yeah, let's just, let's just touch it. Get rid of the Blood Tithe Harvester. Well, let's see what our opponent has. They really need like a shield rid, another, hmm. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Two Blood Tokens might keep us from running out this Thought Knot Seer, unfortunately. Yeah, let's just Charming Prince. If we run out Thought Knot, they just get to kill it for free with the Blood Tithe Harvester, which is not ideal. Plus, if we wait, they're gonna sag the Blood Tokens because they're missing land drops. Well, Reflector Mage to the bottom. Thrabes, probably also to the bottom. We'd really like to find a Panharmonicon. Also a land for the Might Stone of Weak Stone. Those are, those are what we're looking for most. Up -oh. I figured they were gonna sack blood for sure after they missed a land drop, but all right, now our opponent's gonna, ooh, sack the blood, discard the ox. Sure. Up -oh. it goes attacking. We wanna get down this Thought Knot. Nah, I think it's worth trading. Opponent's gotta have some goodies if they're missing land drops. Well, there's the land. Playing on blue. Let's just Might Stone, Weak Stone, draw a couple cards. It's kind of amazing just how important this this card is to Panharmonicon. Like, I totally look past it during spoiler season because the focus is on melding it with Urza, but just like an artifact that works with Panharmonicon that draws two cards or kills pretty much anything is actually a super, super huge deal. Like it is, it is really, really big for Panharmonicon decks. Ooh, another one, another one. So we can Thought Knot and then Channel Touch the Spirit Realms. Yeah, let's try to stop taking so much damage off of our mana base. Uh, yeah, I thought not here. Little awkward that our opponent gets to double loot here, but still. What do you got, opponent? What do you got? Shieldred, Infernal Grasp, Rending Volley. Well, take the removal spell. Don't especially care about Shieldred. Like, we have multiple, multiple ways of killing it. And then I think we just snag Yarion. So no touch the Spirit Realm this turn, but Yarion Blink 
Mighty Stone and Weakstone and Thought Knot's pretty decent. I mean, if we ever find Panharmonicon, it's absurd, but even without it, it's pretty good. Opponent. Wow, pitches the Shieldred and the Ren. I guess they're just trying to fill the graveyard for the Ox. Opponent, combat. Attacks. Yeah, I think we're gonna block. This does mean Bone Crusher could be a thing, but. Opponent's so tight on mana, we don't want them to just keep making treasures. All right, so there's a the Bone Crusher. Opponent kills the Thought Knot, draws a card. And more Fable than Mirror Breakers. Yup. Come on, Panharmonicon. Come on, Panharmonicon. Oh, <laughs> Magic Gods, thank you. Uh, so, oh, this is pretty decent. Panharmonicon. And then land, Yarion. Blink, blink. Get him back. Oh no, oh. Hmm. <laughs> Probably should not have blinked that touch of the spirit realms. <laughs> I always forget that Phantomonica, it only works with artifacts and creatures. So it doesn't actually double trigger touch the spirit realms. Like the new Elish Norn will. That'll work with touch the spirit realms and in any ETB trigger. Panharmonic on though, artifacts and creatures only. So we kind of just gave our opponent a free blood token. Uh, still, we wrath their board into a bunch of cards, like whatever. If anything, maybe it's good because maybe the blood keeps our opponent in the game a little bit longer so we can generate <clears throat> more Panharmonic on value. We don't want him scooping too quick. We got cool things to do. This is where life is good. I mean, opponent, they did get a little stuck on mana, but they've had multiple Kiki Jikis, Bone Crushers. It's not like the draw's been horrible other than the, the mana issues. And Shatter Skull smashing, and another Bone Crusher. Well, let's have some fun. So, step one. Spirited Companion, woof woof, draw two cards. Ew, two land cards. Fine, we have, <laughs> we have a Mite Stone and Weak Stone. Mite Stone and Weak Stone number two. Keep the new one. I think we gotta kill at least the reflection. Yeah, kill the reflection, draw some cards. And then Chef it Dunes. I mean, we can also touch the Spirit Realm, the Yarion, to uh, re blink everything. Bone it. Reflection's a Kiki Jiki. Again. Plays the land. Opponent's one card short of getting back Ox, which I think means we actually don't want to kill the Bone Crusher. Actually, yeah, that's fine. We want to keep it alive, so let's just block and blink. Opponent not going to be able to refill their hand with the Ox, and we get to, I mean, do everything. Does our opponent concede? Our opponent stuck it out to the bitter end last time, so our opponent just might not be a scooper. We drop to a lot, which is fine with us, because we're gonna do sweet things about it. Castle Lockway draws a card. Sure. I mean, I guess at some point they can just, maybe it's foolish to try to keep these alive because they have the blood tokens. So they can discard to get the ox back anyway. Well, all right, instead, boom, crush a giant. Well, here comes Yarion. This time we will not blink to touch the spirit realms. Untap. Oh, more banner monogons. Panharmonicon, number two. Skyclave Apparition, probably better known as Plague Wind here. <laughs> get them all, get them all. Double Bow Crusher, Reflections, gone. Tap land, might as well hit you with the Yarion. Yeah, they have creature lands, but I don't think they can kill us here. And now we get to draw six? Sounds uh, sounds reasonable. Might sound a weak stone. X3, draw, draw, draw. Should find us something. Oh, <gasps> portal to Frexia. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That's pretty pretty decent. Up out of the depths. And, all right, sacks the, sacks the blood to fill the graveyard, discards the land, trying to get the Ox of Agona set up. Oh, thought sees. Oh, I assume that means our portal. 
I don't even, I don't even know if it matters at this point. It takes the portal, but still like, we have Displacer. I guess we don't really have card draw. I guess Displacer blinking Yarion to blink the Might Stone a weak stone, I guess that's card draw. And also Thraven Inspector is kind of card draw. All right, here comes the Ox of Agotis. Our opponent has done it. <laughs> They've escaped the Ox. What a wild game. I could get used to the two Panharmonicon life. We need a, a ley line of Panharmonicon. <laughs> Just start on the battlefield. <laughs> Opponent. What did you find, friend? All right, Thought Seize. Down to eight. Takes the Displacer, which they pretty much had to do. That was going to beat them. Sacks the blood. Draws a card. And pass. Oh my god, Charming Prince. Could we have won there? Oh, I think we might have... Yeah. Oops. <laughs> I think we actually could have won. If we had... We could have bounced the ox. One, two... Three, four, five. One, two... I think we could have fired up both creature lands, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think we... I mean, it could have went wrong. Opponent could have had a... Could have a one mana removal spell or something. So maybe this is for the best. I mean, I guess the thing is, when it comes to these Panharmonicon decks... Yeah, let's let's just keep doing value. <laughs> let's go every mode of Charming Prince. Blink the Yarion. Scry 2. Ah, Glass Bull is pretty decent. Gain some life. Sack a clue. Draw the glass pool. Play the glass pool. Copy Charming Prince. Three life. Three life. Scry 2. I mean, we're almost back to 20 here. But when it comes to these banner monocon decks, my brain is not usually, put the lance to the bottom, not usually thinking about how can we kill our opponent most efficiently because the challenge of these decks is getting to this point. Like once you get to this point, it kind of doesn't matter if you're like, oh, we could have had lethal if we did this and fired up a creature land because the value is just so overwhelming that the deck just, it, it's its gonna do its thing regardless. And in some ways not winning is more fun because then you get more Panharmonicon triggers. So we're gonna blink out a bunch of stuff here in part because we want the triggers and in part because like blinking the Panharmonicons, it just protects them for, during our opponent's turn so they're not gonna get blown up by something. The opponent, rending volley the Skyclave. They are gonna get a huge token. <laughs> it's 9-9, nine, nine. yeah. I mean, maybe it's not over yet. I think it's mostly over though. Like once, <laughs> fatal push on the Charming Prince. Like once these Yarian cards come back, it's gotta be over. We will take it. I mean, we literally have lethal with Yarian here. <laughs> we also don't wanna be, we're not trying to like BM and like intentionally not kill our opponent. <laughs> not this time. Opponent, take Numa. Feels like desperation. Gets back Kali Toss and scoops it up to the Ariad stuff coming back. Yeah, that was uh that was gonna be a few triggers. Just a just a few. Well, <laughs> there's a monicon taking down Rakdos, which either it or Green Devotion is the best uh, deck in the format. Yeah, once this stuff comes back, we gain so much life. We bounce our opponent's stuff. We draw so many cards. Well, that was a that was an impressive grindy game. Whoo! There's a monicon. <laughs> sweet, sweet. So what did we learn this week about Urza Monogod in Explore? Uh, Record-wise, I was playing this deck for fun, so I played a lot of games with it. Right around 50% win percentage. Our video games, we went three and two, which, eh, I mean, depending on what games you pick, it's probably gonna be a three or two or two and three, because it was right around 50%. And I think the good news is, as we got to see, the value in the late game is literally overwhelming. Like, we just get to the point where this deck, where it feels like nothing can kill us. Where we're just like drawing so many cards, killing so many things, bouncing so many things, locking our opponent out of drawing cards with Thought Nazir and Eldrazi Displacer, Fortal of Phyrexia just to wreck our opponent. It feels like we can't lose. So in the late game, this deck is ridiculous. It's so good. On the other hand, we did see the downside of the deck, which it can get off to some slow starts. So we talked about that during the deck deck. The downside of Panharmonicon is it can be tough to take off a turn to get it on the battlefield. That is doubly true against aggro. And we got to see that a little bit against like the Sarah combo or other aggro decks. If your opponent's just curving out with soldiers or playing mono red burn, we can just be too slow with some of our draws. If we have the right draw, we're fine. If we're going like three minutes 
Spectre, into Charming Prince, into Skyclave, your thing, into Cloud Blazer. We can stabilize, but a lot of times aggro can be a problem. So I think Urza Monogon, I mean, it's a Panharmonicon deck. I love the deck. We got to see it just do absolutely absurd things. And the new additions, they are a huge, huge deal. The Might Stone and the Weak Stone, it is the truth in the deck. It was almost always great. We got to see it multiple times, refilling our hand, killing a ton of stuff, paying for Eldrazi Displacers and paying for Yarion, putting it in our hand. So the synergies are really nice. We did get to see the Displacer Lock, which is hilarious. We're blinking the Thought Knots here on our opponent's upkeep to keep them from drawing anything. That let us beat Mono Green Devotion one of the best decks in the format. And then we even melded Urza a couple of times too, which is kind of weird. Urza itself is kind of like meh in the deck, but we're only playing two copies. So what usually happens is hopefully we don't draw it until the late game. Once we get this huge Panharmonic on turn, we're just drawing so many cards and doing so many things. And then we find the Urza and then we just meld it. And the Urza Planeswalker pretty much locks out the game. So the deck is really sweet. Win rate kind of in the middle, I would say. But if you like value and you like Panharmonic, Gods. I think this is a really sweet way to build around the card in 2023, and it's some good practice for Elishnor. This deck's going to get even crazier once we add Elishnor to the mix. Is a Panharmonicon that's also on this massive body that's going to be hard to get through and can block for days. So that's our Zamonicon. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and happy holidays to y'all. Happy New Year's. Have a great one, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you in 2023.